Hi everybody and welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. I'm Dawn and I'm happy that you all came back to listen to me ramble about books again. And thank you so much to all my new subscribers. I'm up to 31 now and that is a total of 26 people that have subscribed to me that I do not know in real life. So that is amazing to me. Um, you may or may not be able to hear the hamster running on her wheel again. My apologies. Um, tonight, I've been a little behind lately. I didn't get to do last week's Top 5 Wednesday. I probably won't get to do this week's Top 5 Wednesday. At some point, I'm going to get back on track with that, but I've got a lot of due dates for school coming up soon, so I've been kind of swamped with that, and it's just been a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> I've just been tired and everything. So um, I want to talk, I want to do a an original tag, what I think is an original tag, and then talk about one thing and then show you one really cool thing. So uh, three things in one tonight. So the first thing I want to do is an original tag. And if anybody out there has seen or done a tag that is like this and I've missed it, please let me know and I will credit the person who originally did it. I haven't seen one, so I'm assuming that it's not been done, right? So I'm just calling it the TV and movie tag. And the idea is that you take the last five TV shows or movies that you watched and you match them up with a book that you have or that you've read. Um, it doesn't have to be on your physical shelves, I don't guess, if you don't, you know, if you don't have the book that makes you think of. Um, just, if you watch The Maze Runner, don't use The Maze Runner as the book. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, free game. And like I say, if this has already been done, please let me know because I haven't been around that long, so I don't know. Um, the first thing, so Friends has been on, put on US Netflix, so we've been watching a lot of that <laughs> lately. And for some reason, well, not for some reason, it made me think of The Babysitter's Club. And this is actually the prequel that came out a couple of years ago called The Summer Before, and it's supposed to be the summer right before they created this Babysitter's Club. It was okay. I think I gave it a three star three or three and a half star. I may have given it more just for nostalgia's sake. Um, it wasn't that it was a bad book. It's just that I think being in my early thirties reading it made a big difference as opposed to being 12 or 13 and reading it. You know, I don't know, but I, I may have given it more stars for nostalgia. I just can't remember. So the second thing, uh, this afternoon actually that I was watching was an episode of Cupcake Wars and on title alone made me think of Suzanne Collins the Hunger Games so of course the cupcake bakers on this show do not you know go after each other although it might be kind of interesting if they did sometimes but yeah uh, the third show my wife is obsessed with ghost adventures and so we watch that every week and that made me think of one of my favorite horror authors that's Scott Nicholson and this is the first and I'm not sure if it's a trilogy or just a series um the book just says series so it may be more than three I haven't gotten hold of any of the others yet but this is the first one in the solemn series it's the scarecrow super creepy book but it's more I like Scott Nicholson because it's more classic kind of horror like creepy things haunted house there's something, you know, it's not jump scare and, you know, straight up gore brains on the walls kind of horror. It's just, not that there's anything wrong with those because, you know, I've read some excellent ones that were brains on the wall horror, but I really prefer the old school kind of Shirley Jackson, a lot of Stephen King's and Joe Hill's work that are just creepy. And that's a really, he's a really good one for that. So the fourth thing I watched was Kingdom Come. If you have not seen this movie, it is hilarious. So it's got LL Cool J and Vivica Fox, and it's based on a, a, a play. And the these two brothers' father dies, and the whole family comes together for the funeral, and it's just a huge mess. And it's really, really funny. So if you haven't watched it, please, it's on DVD. Go get it. You will not be sorry. It's really funny. But it made me think of this book, The Rosewood Casket by Sharon McCrum. And in this book, um, a father dies and his family comes home to bury him. And there's also a mystery involved. Sharon McCrum's, which I've talked about her books before, they're all set in Appalachia. This one happens to be a contemporary novel with a mystery. Um, 
but there's a lot about Appalachian culture, Appalachian customs, things like that thrown in that I'm familiar with just from my family. But all of her books are really good. This is not the first in her series, in the um, ballad novel series, but it is a really, really good one. So, And the last thing, we watch a lot of Jeopardy, but I don't watch it during the week when it's actually on because my wife is asleep. Uh, because she has to work. So on Fridays, we will just binge watch the DVR. Um, we're a little bit behind now, but we were binge watching some on Saturday. And the book that made me think of was Einstein, His Life and Universe by Walter Isaacson, which I have not gotten a chance to read. It has been sitting behind me. I got it for free um, some time ago, and I just haven't had a chance to read it. It's quite a chunky book, and I love big books. Seriously, I love them. But... I just haven't had a chance to sit down and read it. Um, but yeah, so there is my TV and movie tag. And I don't really know a whole lot of you guys very well, so I don't want to tag anybody. But if you want to do this tag, please do consider yourself tagged and tag me in the comments or whatever to let me know you did it. And I will go and watch. Um, and like I said, if somebody has already done a tag like this, please let me know because I am a newbie and I may have just overlooked it. So the next thing I want to do is talk about the Young Adult Literature Awards uh, that came out today. So every year, the American Library Association has two conferences, one in the summer, which is ALA Annual, and it's the larger of the two. And then the midwinter one always happens in January. This year it was in Chicago. And so everybody's posting pictures of snow and everything. Obviously I didn't get to go. I'm still in Florida in my house, but, um, they announced the winners of the yearly youth literature awards at the midwinter meeting. And those were all released today. And there are way too many for me to sit here and go through each and every single one and all their honor books, but I will provide the link below. Please go check it out. Um, I always say award lists are kind of like Wikipedia. They're a brilliant place to start, but never ever finish there. Um, if you're looking for really great books in a specific category, like LGBTQ, Go look at the Stonewall Awards and the Rainbow List, but don't stop there. You know, those are really great starting places. Branch, take those and kind of branch your way out to other literature. Um, the Credit Scott King Awards, a really good place to look for African American children and young adult literature, but it's not a place to stop. You want to look at those, see the, you know, some place to start if you're not familiar with it, and follow those out. Follow, you know, different authors out. Follow, uh, those trails out to the ends because you'll find some really great literature that may not ever have made its way to the award lists. I have plenty on these shelves that are just amazing, but have never seen an awards list. So definitely go check those out. Um, especially if you love young adult and children's literature, a couple of the ones that I really wanted to win, I actually got an award this year, the Caldecott I was very excited about. Um, Caldecott is for picture books, and the one that won was Beekle, An Unimaginary Friend. I think it was The Unimaginary Friend. I can't remember the exact title, but the guy, the, the creature's name is Beekle, and it is so cute. It's just adorable. Anyway, go to the link, check out all the winners, um, look at all the awards, and, you know, let me know if you had any particular ones you were hoping would win this year, and uh, we can talk about that in the comments, so that'd be great. And the third thing is, I want a small giveaway um, from Samantha over at Cold Tea and Crumbs, who I absolutely love. She's one of the first few channels that I found on here, and I was very excited when she emailed me and told me I won, and what I won was a letter from her, and the most adorable little bookmark on the face of the planet, right? It's so little. I love it. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. I love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Samantha. And I really appreciate it. It came all the way from England. I was so excited. Airmail. Airmail. I just love it. It came all the way. It has, even has the, um, the queen on the stamp. I was very excited. Um, that's all I really had. Hopefully, um, when I upload this one, I've already, there's another video I did of another tag, um, that I'm probably going to upload this week as well, or I may, depending on how busy my week is, I may end up having to wait and use it for next week's video. We'll see. But, yeah. 
Um, I'm hoping to get some more <sighs> tags done because I really like the tags. I think the tags are a lot of fun. So if you have any suggestions for tags you'd like me to do or tags, you know, particular channels that do a lot of tags, let me know below and I will check those out as well. Um, other than that, I guess that's all I had for tonight. I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.